it hasn't creased. A glue stick. He is a genius. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, today's video is gonna be me doing my makeup, how I learned from Beyonce's makeup artist. His name is Sir John, and I was lucky enough last week to go to a kind of like makeup masterclass thing with him that he was doing with L'Oreal because I think he works with L'Oreal and it was so useful um, and I took so many notes throughout and I did also take a couple of vlog clips but all of the notes that I wrote down like he just gave so many good tips and the model's makeup that he was using turned out beautiful and so I thought I would do a full video on these kind of like makeup techniques that he was doing and try them on my own face. I've got like a massive list of things here and I thought I would kind of test out all of his advice and see how my makeup turns out. So he was showing us how to use some of L'Oreal's new products because they've got a new foundation and concealer. I picked up some of, the, some of the concealers from the masterclass and then I went down to Boots and bought the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Fresh Wear um, Oxygen Technology Foundation, which I used to love the original Infallible Foundation, so I'm interested to see if this is any different. So he did say that he normally does like to start with eyes first and then he will go in with foundation, but because he wasn't doing much eyeshadow, um, he did the foundation first and then did the eyes. And a really interesting tip that he told us is that he really likes to apply foundation when moisturizer is still wet on your face or like your primer is still wet on your face. Um, just cause he said then when the moisturizer dries, it kind of like locks in the foundation. So I'm gonna do that. And he also said he likes to go in with a moisturizer and then the quarterly, whatever that spray is that everyone loves. I don't have that exact one, but I've got a really similar one by a brand called Amorovisca, I think. So he likes to do moisturizer and then he goes in with like a spray and then immediately does the foundation while your skin's still kind of wet, which I found really interesting. So the spray that I'm gonna use is the Queen of Hungry Mist by Amorovisca. And the moisturizer I'm using is the Revolution Hydration Boost or Hydro Boost Gel. Then I'm gonna give my face a spritz. This is really weird feeling. And then he used a beauty blender to blend it in, but he also went in with a brush and he just kind of stamped it on like this. Another thing that he said is that he likes to leave the eyelids bare because he likes a bit of texture to show through from the eyelids and if you completely blank them out with concealer, then it kind of gets rid of some of the dimension of the eyeshadow. But then somebody did ask, what if you have particularly oily eyelids, which I do have like oily skin and my eyelids do get oily. Um, and he said that the NARS eyeshadow primer is really, really good because it doesn't like completely cover your skin, but it just like gives your eyeshadow something to stick to. So I'm gonna use that in a minute. And he was really saying that he likes skin to look like skin and that he was saying that he used to work for Charlotte Tilbury and that if you could see the foundation on a model's skin, then he would have been fired. And something else which he said, which was a tip for people that have deep set smile lines is to remove the excess foundation and product that gets in your smile lines. And I've just got to say, I've been trying this since the masterclass last week. Every day when I've been doing my makeup, I've been kind of just applying my foundation as normal and then taking the clean side of the beauty blender and kind of just dabbing over my smile lines to get rid of any excess product. And it has been helping so much and then I just do like a really quick dab over it just so that it kind of blends a bit more. He then took a buffing brush and just kind of like did circular motions over all of the skin um, to like work the foundation in even more but I feel like this is just gonna take away a lot of the coverage. I mean that's definitely sheared down the coverage but my skin does look very skin like. I'll conceal like any breakouts later. So he left the model's eyelids completely bare and then just went straight in with eyeshadow um, but then like I said for oily eyelids, he recommended this NARS eyeshadow primer, which I do have. It's called the Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Oh, and another tip as well, he said, is to always use your ring finger when you're like patting anything around your eyes because your other fingers are too harsh and they'll make you wrinkle more. And then another thing that he also suggested is you can use like a coal um, eye pencil as a base and then put anything over the top of it to like set it with powder. So like for your eyes, use a coal first and then put your eyeshadow over the top to set it. And then he suggested that for brows as well. If you have like a particularly creamy brow pencil to always set it with a brow powder afterwards. And he was basically saying that he likes to use a cream and then powder to like really lock everything in place. So I've got my primer on and then I'm gonna go in with this eyeshadow palette, which is the Master Series One Blank Canvas Cosmetics palette. He literally just 
just used two shades on her eyes. It was super, super simple. He used like a light brown and then a darker brown. So I'm going to go in with Hibiscus and then Downtown, I think. Actually, this shade might be a bit dark. I'm going to start with Brazen. I'm not sure what palette he was using. I didn't recognize it. Maybe it was a L'Oreal one, I'm not really sure, but I'm just gonna, it was literally just like two brown shades that he used, so. And obviously my makeup is not gonna turn out as good as his because he's literally Beyonce's makeup artist. I'm not even a makeup artist, but I just wanted to really like try this. He kind of just put this like all over the lid. Oh my days. I just dropped my eyeshadow brush onto my hoodie. Why am I like this? As he was doing the eyeshadow, he wasn't talking through this step loads just because um, he was kind of telling his story of how he worked his way up from the bottom. Um, and he used to just like do kind of like carry equipment for makeup artists and do like coffee runs and stuff. And then eventually he managed to work his way up to work for Charlotte Tilbury. And I think it was Pat McGrath that he was saying he worked for. Um, and yeah, and now he's freaking Beyonce's makeup artist just from like working his way up from the bottom It was like honestly just listening to him talk was so inspirational And then he also took some of this onto the lower lash line and he did this before concealer, which I found really interesting Oh my god, why do I look like Gerard Way right now? He only does a few dots of concealer He was like you do not need like a triangle under your eyes He says that it looks so much more natural if you just put a few dots of concealer Then he blends out his concealer with a fluffy brush and he doesn't take it all the way up to your lash line Because he says that it's like natural to have a tiny bit of shadow like most people's eyeballs They make this kind of like shadow and like crease under your eyes and so he says that he finds it so much more natural looking and so much more better looking if you just leave like a gap so he only brought the concealer kind of up to where he'd done the eyeshadow which i think is why he did the eyeshadow first and he was using the new l'oreal infallible more than concealers let's go for the shade called eggshell and yeah he used a kind of fluffy brush like this to blend out the concealer which kind of scares me a little bit i've never tried this concealer before so he just did like a few kind of dots and then he just, oh my god, oh dear, this is really full coverage. I don't even think I needed this much. Then he just kind of blended the concealer in with this brush. Well, not this specific brush, but just like a fluffy brush. That's quite a full coverage concealer. Yeah, I mean, I guess that cleaned up my under eye eyeshadow quite nicely. I think I'm then going to go in with the shade Ivory, just on my blemishes and stuff. Same brush to just blend those in. And he also used his finger as well to kind of warm it up. And he said that using your fingers also worked really well for blending concealer. I actually quite like how my concealer looks. I really like that concealer actually, it was really good coverage. Also something I'm noticing as well is normally my concealer creases badly under my eyes, but because I haven't brought it all the way up to the top, it hasn't creased. So he then said that you should never use a pressed powder under your eyes because the formula of pressed powders are a lot more heavy because they have to be like weighed down to stay in pressed form. He says that they look too cakey under your eyes and they can give you like, um, the appearance of wrinkles and looking older and more tired. So he says that he uses a really lightweight, loose powder, like really finely milled powder under the eyes. He said for the rest of the face, pressed powder is fine, but for under your eyes, he said that you should use like the lightest, most floaty kind of loose powder that you can find. And in the masterclass, he did use this one, which is the new L'Oreal Infallible Magic Loose Powder which is blue, but I'm gonna try it, it's literally blue. But he did also just use this over the rest of the face as well, but he did the under eyes first. And also as well for applying the powder, he says that he takes like a really small amount on a fluffy brush and he doesn't like using a beauty blender under the eyes to like bake or anything. I think he said like in the masterclass, he was like, I cook, I don't bake. And he basically says that he's kind of against baking. He just uses the tiniest bit of loose powder, which to be fair, does look very smooth. Then he said that he always does cream contour and then powder contour. And to contour, he normally uses MAC taupe blush, which I don't have, but I do have a very cool toned contour color. He always contours with a really cool toned shade and he does like the cheekbones, the nose and the jaw. And then to warm up the face, he then goes in with bronzer. And one of his favorite products he said is this RCMA concealer palette, which I just happen to have. Have. Um, he said that these are really good for like contouring the nose like I think this color and everything that he did on the face He was using like a fluffy brush and circular motions. He did go in with like a general kind of warm toned 
concealer to, as like a cream bronzer, but he said that he would normally always do the contour first and then the bronzer. But because in the masterclass he didn't have his usual products, he used like a darker shade of the new L'Oreal concealer, which is what I'm gonna do. This is the shade Caramel. So he took this on the back of his hand, I think, and then just dipped his brush into it. So I'm just taking a bit of this. Oh my God, this is literally orange. So he just kind of applied that like all over the cheeks and then a bit like round the temples as well. But I kind of got the impression that every time he picked up product, he was taking like a really small amount at, at a time and then just like really building on it. And then just using like a really light hand just to warm up the face, to be fair. It's actually working really nicely. Okay, what the heck, my skin is actually looking so nice right now. And then also on my cheeks and for my nose, I'm gonna use this shade from the RCMA palette. He also said as well to like use your beauty blender as you go and if you make any mistakes, just kind of go back in and blend it out. I never normally contour my nose and he says that he always starts up here by the brow and then just kind of drags it down. But I think he says he always uses cream contour on the nose because sometimes powder contour can look a bit too harsh. And then to warm up the face he used this which is the L'Oreal Back to Bronze but I think he just kind of used this to set the cream in place. Then I'm just using a tiny bit more of that loose powder like literally the smallest amount and I'm just gonna go over my forehead a little bit, chin, and just areas where I didn't set my face before. Then for the eyebrows, something so interesting, which he said is that he uses, well he used to use like Pritt stick, a glue stick on people's brows. And he says that he's now moved on to using wig glue, but he said if you don't have wig glue, then he's always using Pritt stick as brow gel because it dries down clear and apparently it comes off easily with water. And he says, if you ever see Beyonce's looks on the red carpet and just anyone's makeup that he does in general, he always uses glue to stick down their brows as a brow gel. Like how crazy is that? Get like a spoolie, get some glue, like glue stick, put it in your brows, brush them all upwards, and then once it's fully dried, you can draw on top of it and it acts as like a waterproof base. So he said, if you have no eyebrows, put some Pritt stick on first. I know that a lot of drag queens use glue to like do their brows, but I just thought that was so interesting. So I'm gonna do the same, but first I'm gonna do my color of my brows and then I'll use the glue to set it in place. Use the L'Oreal Unbeliever Brow, which is like a long wear brow gel. And he said that he hates the trend of concealing around the brows. He likes brows to look fluffy and feathery and he was like you will never see me put concealer on someone's brows. This color it looks way too dark for me but I'm just gonna put some on the back of my oh crap. So he didn't add too much product at all he literally was just doing like little strokes with a brow brush. I really like this brow product. Okay so to be honest my brows already feel like pretty set in place just using that brow gel but I'm gonna go in with the glue stick. I'm so scared to do this. Getting in there with my spoolie. And he was like, oh, this works better than soap brows or whatever other brow trends you're gonna try. He was like, just use glue. So I guess that's what we're doing. Oh my God. Am I really about to put glue in my eyebrows? Yes. Yes, I am. If it's good enough for Beyonce, it's good enough for me. <laughs> oh my God, this is so weird. Okay, <laughs> these eyebrows are not going anywhere. They actually feel stuck to my face, which I guess is the point. And like, to be fair, you can't see it. It has dried clear. Then on the eyes, he says that he loves using these Stila um, glitters. So I'm gonna use the one in Smoky Storm, which I believe is the one that he used on the day. Mine has kind of gone a bit crusty and dried out and gross looking. But he put this on the lid and then like blended it out with a fluffy brush and it's just the most beautiful glitter. And then he took a brush and just kind of blended that like all over the lid. I forgot how much I love these. And then for mascara, one tip that he suggested is using, like if you're prone to getting mascara on your lids, to put your finger in front of it and then do your mascara onto your finger and then you can just wash your finger. Um, but what I am gonna do is just put it on as normal because I need to hold my mirror at the same time. Um, but this is the mascara he used. It was the L'Oreal Unlimited Mascara. But he said that one of his favorites is the Lash Paradise, which I also freaking love. So those are the eyes done. I think they honestly look beautiful. Like they're so 
simple, but they look so pretty. And then for highlighter, he went in with a liquid highlighter, which is something I never do just because I always normally have to set my face with so much powder um, and I just never get on with them but he took some of this which is the Glow Monomore Drops which are also by L'Oreal I think he was just using a lot of their makeup because it was a L'Oreal masterclass um, but he said that he loves these drops and they kind of set down um, like they dry down on your skin and he said that you should only bring your highlighter up to where like the corner of your eye is. I always stop any shimmery blush, any shimmery highlight, anything emollient here underneath the eyes. If you bring shimmer any farther across the front of the apples of the cheeks, underneath the eyes, it becomes unkept and looks greasy. It makes you look like you've had your foundation over 30 hours. You look like a more stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> he took some of this like on the back of his hand and then just blended it in with his fingers. Um, okay, what the heck, that actually looks really nice. <laughs> My hand is disgusting. Another tip that he said that he does is whenever he goes on holiday and he's sunbathing, he will put SPF 15 or like a lighter SPF all over his face, but then under his eyes and areas that he wants to be highlighted, he uses factor 50, no, factor 80. And so that when his face kind of like naturally tans, like his whole face is protected by like a thin veil of SPF, but then his under eyes are like really bright because they've been super protected. And then finally for the lips and also for blush, he used a kind of like red, um, ready orange color. I'm gonna use this one, which is the NYX Liquid Suede in Foiled again. He used this as a liquid lip and then he also used it as blush. I don't know if that's gonna work well over my highlight, but we'll give it a try. And he also said, if you have dry lips, but you want your lipstick to stay matte, but they still need to be moisturized, he said to use eye cream on your lips because it's not as shiny as a lip balm, but it still moisturizes them at the same time, but it also stays matte, which I thought was genius. Cause having like a glossy lip balm under your lipstick can kind of change the formula. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna take my number seven eye cream and I'm gonna put it on my lips. I mean, yeah, my lips feel super moisturized now, but as you can see, they're not shiny. He is a genius. It's a bit brighter. Than, oh my God, no, that's not the right color. Okay, so I just went to try and find a different lip color, but I don't really have that many options that were similar to what he used. Um, I've got these three, but I'm thinking, I don't know, this one was a bit too corally. So I think I might go for this one, which is by The Body Shop, and I might mix it with a bit of this. Oh, that's also a bit too corally. I'm just gonna go over it with a bit of this one. Okay, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of that on the back of my hand. Oh my God, this is terrifying. And then he used a big kind of fluffy brush again. And then he used a bit of this as blush. Oh my God, is that too much? Probably. So I'm just gonna go back in with this uh, spray. And that is the finished look using all of the tips from Beyonce's makeup artist. Um, I actually think it looks like, it looks different for me because I would never normally wear this lip and also I don't know. I think maybe if I had a nude lip, I would like this a bit better. And I think maybe the color I'm wearing isn't complementing my skin tone too much, but I think it actually looks really nice. So this is what everything looks like overall. My eyebrows, like I really like how you can see all the hairs. So that is everything for this video. Like I honestly, I think it looks really pretty. My skin looks really, really nice. If you guys aren't following Sir John on Instagram, um, I would highly recommend checking him out because he just did the most incredible makeup. It was so useful. He's amazing. I'm just gonna get a question of the day, um, but I will leave all the products that I used linked down below. Question of the day comes from Tash Collinson and she said, who are your best friends made through YouTube? Oh, I've made a lot. I've definitely made like a lot of friends through YouTube. Uh, the people that I would probably consider my best friends that I see the most often and I talk to the most through YouTube, like just narrowing it down, I'd probably say Emma from Emma's Rectangle, Jazz from Jazzy Bum and Sophie Louise. Um, those are probably my three best friends that I've made through YouTube. Okay, so I'm gonna go now. If you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I would love to know any of your thoughts or maybe even your tips and tricks down below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.